Hey there, so glad to be able to spend a few minutes with you today. I hope your day is going to be glorious and filled with joy and light and hope and blessing and the presence of friends and relationships that are dynamic and beautiful to your spirit and the presence of God in your life who loves you and has called you according to his goodness. So I wanted to spend a couple minutes today with you in a story that comes at the end of Samuel's life. Samuel was the last judge, kind of the first prophet in Israel. And so it's towards the end of his life. And <clears throat> I think that's all you need. Here's how that story goes. Now Samuel was old. And so he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his oldest son was Joel and his second born Abiah, and they judged in Beersheba. But they didn't walk in the ways of Samuel. They turned aside to dishonest gain. They took bribes and they perverted justice. So all the elders of Israel came to Samuel and said, Give us a king to judge us like the other nations have. This displeased Samuel. Oh, wait, the people actually said this. You are old and your sons don't walk in your ways. Therefore, give us a king to judge over us like the other nations have. This displeased Samuel immensely. So he went to God and prayed. And the Lord said to him, listen to the voice of the people and do as they ask. For they've not rejected you. They rejected me as king over them. This is what they've done since the first day when I brought them up out of Egypt. They have turned aside to other gods and chosen them over me. Therefore, they're doing this to you as well. So listen to their voice, but warn them sternly about what a king will do to them. So that's where that passage ends for today anyway. So I'm just wondering what it might have felt like to God to had walked to have walked with his people for so many years and had them repeatedly turn against them against him what might that have felt like how might that have impacted the heart of god to have the people continually turn from him and samuel's sons what do we learn about them that they didn't walk in their father's ways they turned aside to dishonest gain they took bribes and they perverted justice what would that tell us about the heart of his sons? Might it tell us what kind of relationship they had or did not have with God? And how much they trusted God in that relationship? And it's interesting that we don't see Samuel's relationship to his sons whatsoever in this passage. Could Samuel had, had disciplined them or spoken to them somehow so that they would change their ways? And the people, did they have another option when they came to Samuel? Another option other than saying, give us a king to judge us like the other nations. Could they have said, hey, your sons don't fall in your ways. Could you discipline them so that they will? Could they have said, teach us what it means to have God as our king and let God rule over us? What might we have learned about the people had they said any of those things? Well, let's see. We might have learned that <laughs> they looked for options other than what they just saw in front of them, like the option of a king like other nations. We might have learned that they were hungry and thirsty to learn what it meant to have God rule and reign over their lives. But instead, we see them saying, we want to be like them, like the other nations. And we want to be like them by having a king to judge us. Isn't that interesting that the solution for having bad judges, the sons of Samuel, is to have another human judge who's called a king, and apparently when he's a king, he'll be a good judge, right? Is that what they're saying? <laughs> Man, impact on Samuel was clear, right? He was displeased and prayed to God. Could Samuel have done something other than pray to God? Could he have rebuked the people? Could he have yelled back at them? Whatever. But he doesn't do that. What does that tell us about Samuel? What do you learn about his character? How he listened for what God would say to him. And God says, listen to the people. Isn't that amazing? Listen to the people. It's almost like God's going to use this bad choice to try to make a good choice out of it or something. You know, this story talks about a people 
that rejected God to have a man over them, to have a man higher than them, to have a man they could serve. Um, today do we see people rejecting having God as the rule of their lives and turning aside to human rule? What would that look like today? How do you, or however you, or maybe someone you've known, turned aside from letting God be ruler in every aspect of life to accepting the counsel or the rule of others? How has that impacted you? I hope that this idea of letting God be king can echo in your heart today, and you will. Take care.